groundwater, it's, uh, it's not as mysterious as everybody thinks. Uh, to understand it, you just have to view it as if it was a creek. It's an underground creek. Uh, they call them aquifers when they come on underground, but they react the same way as creeks do on top of the ground. If it runs, it has to have a place to run. It has to have cracks, crevices, fractures, sands, gravels, loose material. If it's tight material, the water won't be there. And so basically all we're trying to do is, we're not really trying to find the water per se, we're trying to find the best location for the water to be there cracks, crevices, and so forth. And all the water comes out of the Cascades and runs the Pacific. All of it does. Top, on top of the ground, on the, underneath the ground. Uh, this water that we have underneath the ground, though, is a little bit different surface water. Like the water running out of the Santa Am River, that's fairly new water, you know. But up on the top of the Santa Am, up by Santa Am Junction, you've got all those, that black lava that's just sitting there. Well, that's like a big catch basin. And that snow and the rain goes down in those rocks and it'll go down there two, three miles. Fill up those cracks. And eventually it finds its way down here. A large portion of the water like that's in these wells is gonna be as old as the dinosaurs. It sits there for a long time underground to slowly find its way through Crack. I mean, it could run for five miles that way and then five miles that way before it finally works its way here. So that's, that's really it. We're just, you know, the, the art of locating. Um, I've developed, I've been 51 years in groundwater. And so you can tell that there's a fault here. It runs just right through here. And you can really see it over on the other side of the road there when I located that, but the faults are caused from uh, earthquakes, volcanoes, stuff like that, where the ground buckles and cracks. So there you have your cracks. Now where there's water there, well, I've been more right than I've been wrong. Let's put it that way. And uh, the other thing about locating that's interesting, and it's kind of sad in a way, there's very few people doing it anymore. Very, very few. And I'm probably one of the last in the north part of the valley here. And uh, there's just nobody came up and started doing it like I did, you know, 35, 40 years ago. So that's about all you can say about it. And it's, uh, it's a blessing. It's coming a so, lost start. Yes, yes. I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna be a dinosaur. Yeah. You know, and, and sooner or later, people are going to have to just go out and throw their hats and, 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 and pick a spot to drill a well. And they're not going to be as successful as if when you use geology and experience. And, and uh, it's interesting. I refer to this as locating. Some people dowsing, witching, you know, there's all those. And there's, there's nothing, uh, uh, there's no witchcraft involved. <laughs> Not, not, it, it just not there. And as far as, as far as the rods and and uh, what makes them work, 10% of the male population can make them work. 90% of women can make them work. And the best way, it's like anything. You got, you got to practice. You got to keep doing it. And the best thing to do is, if you want to try to do this, take a garden hose and lay it around you and turn it on. But have somebody at the spigot turning it on and off and have them hold it on 15 seconds or off 15 seconds. And you stand there with your rods and if you, if you have the gift, those rods will either cross or they'll go out every time the water's running. And when they turn the water off, they'll go back to where they were. But it's more spiritual. It, it's, uh, to me, it, it, I think it's more spiritual. Gravity, gravity has something to do with it. There's no doubt about that. But the biggest, the biggest thing that, uh, that I do is I, I cleanse my mind. If you noticed, I'm, I'm talking, jabbering, we'll talk about anything while I'm doing it. And that, that helps clear your mind. And if you loosen up the brain and just clear it, it's a remarkable tool. It will really, it performs things and does things that we don't know because we don't use all of our brain. So it's just relaxing and clearing the mind you know, and then 
school years doing this to to learn what they're saying to you when it when it does it and the only thing you can do there is just do it and then drill and and uh, so that's about all run a dry hole <laughs> hey, it 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 can happen uh, fortunately I'm about 90 percent in the depth I'm around 70 percent give or take 20 feet one way or the other if you notice when the rod was when the wire was bouncing to count the depth well, you can't start as soon as it moves. You have to let it get constant in what it's doing when it starts. Then you start counting. And towards the end, towards the end, I can feel it when it starts to slow down. I can feel it right here and here that the pressure is not as great. So then I stop counting. So you have to discount 15 to 20 bobs on each end, and that's why it's not as accurate as, as the other. But. Okay?